All right, guys, this is Tucker Wells. I've got Ben Fonville. What's up, Ben? How are you? How's it going, man? Uh, doing good. Just another day at work, you know. Good. Well, we're continuing our series about how someone accepted their first job in commercial real estate. And we've done three of these interviews so far, and we're going to bring them out to you in a series all at once. And every person has a different story. And Ben and I have known each other for the past year. We both have long hair, so uh, I kind of like him a lot more than other people. However, he found commercial real estate in a different way than a lot of our other audience and guests. Um, ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but you got your first internship senior year during the school year. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, actually just this past spring. Yeah. All right. And you graduated um, when? Yeah. So I graduated in May of this year, 2023. Perfect. And so I thought Ben's story was really compelling for this audience because whether you find commercial real estate late in your career uh, in college, uh, I think Ben will kind of give you uh, some tips on how he overcame uh, potential objections from companies about, hey, you might not have enough commercial real estate experience in the, in the internship side. Um, furthermore, I thought Ben's story was really cool because he was in college like, hardcore COVID area. And and we'll cover how he overcame that and, and kind of what he did. But um, Ben, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass the mic off to you. I guess, will you tell the audience a little bit about just who you are, maybe where you went to school, what your major was in, maybe a little bit why commercial real estate um, and kind of where you work? Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, uh, like Tucker said, my name is Ben. Uh, I grew up in uh, Oilfield town in the middle of nowhere. Uh, came up to Lubbock to go to Texas Tech in the fall of 19. Uh, I started off pre-med. I decided I hated science. Uh, so switched into the business college uh, finance major. And uh, right about the time I did that was when we all got sent home for this really cool two week long spring break and then just never came back to school, it felt like. Um, so I was off campus from the spring of 2020 until the spring of 2022. Uh, so like campus involvement, cause I wasn't, I didn't rush a fraternity, uh, my freshman year. That wasn't really my thing. So campus involvement was kind of non-existent, mm -hmm. uh, just cause nobody was on campus. Um, so that was a little bit challenging coming back, uh, the spring of 22 and being about a year and a half away from graduating and really just having like no thoughts or guidance on like what the career is going to be at that point. Um, and I didn't uh, didn't have any internships or anything uh, during that period. Uh, I tell you what, Tucker, let me let me move locations real fast. I hope that's all right. Um, OK, never mind. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm stealing an office right now uh, <laughs> because the Wi-Fi in my office is down. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I didn't have any internship experience at all. Um, and so it's like I said, spring of 22, and I'm taking my first real estate course because it was required for finance majors. Um, and our club president actually would just get up at the beginning of class every day and just be really annoying about the real estate organization and be like, hey, we've got socials, we've got meetings come out. And so finally I went to a social and really I was just kind of looking for something to do. Uh, so I joined up, uh, started making some new friends, and then I realized like all I had ever known about real estate was houses. Um, and there's like a whole other world to it and ended up uh, doing an officer interview. And I got an officer position because I decided I wanted to be, you know, really involved. I wanted to set myself up the best as I could uh, going forward. And that's kind of where it started. Um, I just started like being in the professor's offices all the time uh, at every meeting, at every social, uh, just super active because I knew I was kind of behind the eight ball because um, the summer between junior and senior year where everyone is supposed to go get it, you know, industry experience, I decided to study abroad in Italy. So that, uh, that chance was gone. Um, but yeah, I think just being involved on campus and having, having professors that were accessible and do, going that route, I, I think was really beneficial for me because uh, it's how I got my name into the space and how I started meeting people uh, like Tucker and like all the, big guys out in Dallas uh, and opportunities started coming because of that. So where do you work right now? And I guess, what's your job title? What do you do? Yeah. So I am an asset management analyst 
for Valor Capital Group multifamily. Um, it's, you know, a pretty, pretty standard value add uh, type company. So what we do is we operate right now only in Lubbock. Uh, used to operate a little bit down in Houston, and we're looking at some other markets. Uh, but for right now, we have a portfolio of about 600 units that we all bought as like downtrodden class C uh, and just heavy value add 10, 12K a door uh, and kind of moving into that class B plus range. So um, that asset management analyst is my title. My scope is kind of all over the place. Uh, I people manage, I project manage uh, contractors and make ready crews. Uh, but then at the other side, I'm like doing lender compliance. I, uh, I write all the checks for the 1099s. Let's go. And uh, yeah, just kind of, I, I wear a lot of hats, I guess. Cool, cool. Um, all right, so from pre-med to commercial real estate. So, I mean, what I heard, you know, no, no really guidance in your career, um, no internships. I guess, what was it that like stuck out in terms of commercial real estate at Texas Tech? You know, you mentioned a little bit about professors were accessible. Your guys' real estate organization uh, had a bunch of socials. I guess what was like, hey, I want to go all in on commercial real estate. Yeah. So I think it was really like once I kind of started getting involved in Rio and got into more of the real estate classes, like especially in the fall of 22. Um, because like I was a finance major, but I just didn't like the like Goldman Merrill route, you know, like I didn't want to be a trader. I didn't want to do corporate finance really. Um, and the real estate finance just made sense in terms of like cap rates and OIs. Like it just clicked in my brain a lot better than the other stuff I was learning. So I decided that that like, it was something I was good at. Uh, and it also interested me because like my, my job today is a perfect example of like what I wanted, right? Like I didn't want to be in an office eight to five every day crunching away at a spreadsheet like sure that's part of my job i probably spend a couple hours a day doing that but i'm also up walking around checking units at we have eight different complexes in our portfolio so i'm all over town all day every day i'm on the phone with contractors with bankers uh with my boss all the time um and so yeah, it was just a field like every owner operator that came and talked to us was like, you know, our, our jobs are crazy. It's never the same every day. And that was what like was really attractive to me. Uh, just not kind of like getting into that like rut, that office worker rut. Uh, so I saw a path where I could avoid that. And that's kind of what jump started me into it. So you you landed this job your mm -hmm. senior year of college without any having any internship. How did you overcome? Like, what steps did you take? I think it's all about being good at making connections with people, right? Because uh, I hear it all the time from everybody. Real estate is a relationships business. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's 100% the route that I took because I didn't, you know, I didn't do everything the right way, just flat out fundamentally. Uh, but I was able to overcome that because like Carl Pankratz, one of our new professors, uh, I kind of just bugged him until he took me under his wing. Uh, and the same thing with Professor Harrell and just going to like every Rio networking event because we had the opportunities as students. Like I've got numbers in my phone that I have no business having, right, As tw at a 22-year-old. Um, but you just have to make sure that you are proactive in those situations. Like you have to actually go up and talk to people. Uh, and you have to maintain connections. That's a really important thing that I stress to like my friends and to the, the younger people younger than me that are still on campus. It's like a connection isn't fruitful if you don't do anything with it. Like, like if that makes sense, like if you meet somebody and, you know, they they run a fund out in Dallas and you're like, hey, we should really go get coffee sometime. And then you never talk to that person again. Well, I mean, it's not going to do anything for you. So I think that proactivity of like, in any time I'm out of town, I see who I've got in my phone that lives in the city that I'm in. Hey, do you have time for me? Grab lunch, grab coffee. Um, so that's it's all connections, right? It's all making sure that people know you, people want to help you. Um, and so that's that's what I did. Like I just latched on to Carl and, uh, you know, he, he thought I was a, a good student uh, and wanted to help <laughs> me out. So 
uh, anytime that we had guest speakers come in, he, he really helped me out. He would schedule me 30 with that person. Hey, this is one of my favorite students. Like, will you please go talk to him and have coffee? And so I did that uh, enough times until Jordan eventually uh, offered me a job. Uh, so I guess you could say there's a little bit of nepotism in it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, I, I was showing up to everything and making sure that like I was around, I was available, uh, making sure that I was doing the right things in terms of talking to these people, making these connections. And I think that really helped me overcome kind of a lack of industry experience. Well, I always say the best ability is availability. Um, that's a quote from someone else. And so let's talk about the two things that you mentioned that I think is critical for students who are listening to this to understand. Uh, number one, like being proactive in terms of building relationships. And then number two, maintaining those relationships. So I just, Ben, I want to go deeper. Um, when you and I got on the phone, you know, I think you said something about you know, for all of the events, you'd, you'd maybe go with some friends. Um, yeah. And so talk to me about like, you know, say I'm an introvert, a new real estate club member at Texas Tech or Florida State University. Like, what would you do? What would you tell someone to how you, in terms of how you were successful in that being proactive and networking? Yeah. So I, I think that it it's it's always tricky, right? For, for people that are new. And it's one of the biggest things that I used to hear uh, back when I was an officer, uh, back when I was on campus, all of the younger people, uh, you know, the freshmen and the sophomores is like, well, how do I talk to these people? Mm. And um, I, some people are obviously more skilled in those situations than others, but like the advice that I always gave is like, you're not here alone, right? You're usually here with some other students that you know that you're comfortable with. And so if you can buddy up with one or two of those people, and start just making your way around the room that way. I mean, everything's a little less scary when you're not alone, right? So if you grab a buddy and just scan the room and pick out, hey, you know, there's only a couple people in this group. Let's go introduce ourselves. If we do it together, it'll be easier. And it, what I always ended up finding out in those situations is like the adults are always way better at it, right? And they're, they'll kind of help you carry the conversation and do all of that. But you, you have to make the first move. Uh, because, you know, that no one else is going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, like, like I said, it's just everything's easier with a pal. So uh, just if you're at a networking event, you make sure you bring someone, you know, and tackle it as a tandem. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, that maintaining portion. Yeah. How, how you know, I meet someone, I meet, um, uh, let's just say a real estate analyst who's a, a former student. Um, at Texas Tech, how do I maintain that relationship? I mean, are you are you reaching out monthly? Are you sending him news articles? Are you asking for coffee with him? I mean, what kind of steps are you going through? Please break it down. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so like, what I always try to think of is like, who did I connect with really well the first time? Mm -hmm. um, because I mean, obviously, at, like for me as a student, uh, we were meeting everybody it felt like especially on our industry trips out to dallas and stuff um but i think every connection is important to maintain but it's easier to do it with someone that you felt like off the bat you had a connection with so what i do is yeah i'll just shoot a text out like once maybe once a month maybe a little bit less frequent than that but to i'll just do a little name drop thing like rick chesney and barry potts for example they were like guys that I just felt like we got along pretty well when I met him. Um, and there's more names, but yeah, just, you know, shoot a text like, Hey, how's stuff going? Like, you know, it, it's easier if you lead with business, right? So lead with like, what's the rate environment doing like for y'all's acquisitions or, you know, how's leasing going? Cause we're kind of struggling over here and it's a pretty easy floater, right? To send out and you'll have a little conversation. And then, like I said earlier, I mean, I'm still based in Lubbock, which, there's not a ton of uh, real estate professional networking stuff going on out here just because it's a it's a tertiary market. Um, so what I do is every two or three months, I schedule a trip. I come up with a reason to either go to Dallas or go to Houston, because that's basically where everyone that uh, that I've met over the years lives and, and operates. Right. So I'll come up with an excuse like I did it two weeks ago. It was a friend that I'm really not that close to his birthday. And I was like, hey. <laughs> You know, I'm going to come up. I'm going to stay at your apartment. Like we're going to hang out. I haven't seen you. It's your birthday. 
Uh, but I used that as my excuse, right? And I called uh, Rick Barry or uh, Rick Chesney. I called Barry Potts. I called a few other people, and I just scheduled like, hey, you got thirty minutes on Saturday for coffee, or you have an hour for lunch. Like, I'm going to be in the city. I'd like to catch up. Uh, and the the awesome thing is like being young, and this is what I really want to stress to the students. Like, these people want to help you. Amen. Uh, they, they wouldn't like like Tucker came and did a, a meeting at for my club. He wouldn't have done that if he didn't care. Right. Like they care about this generation of workers um, and they're usually going to say yes. Like unless they have a really good reason. Rick was actually in the middle of moving houses and still agreed to have lunch with me. So that's the thing that I stress is like, don't be scared to reach out because you think they're going to say no, because they're pretty much always going to say yes. Like people want to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Did you, do you have like a spreadsheet and how you maintain, like, you know, you know, you mentioned Rick and a, a Barry or something like that, but like, I mean, there's a lot of people. So how are you maintaining like, oh, I met with him this few, uh, this time when I was in Dallas, but mm -hmm. I'm going to Dallas in two other months. Like, how do you, um, I mean, how do you schedule those out? Yeah. So I do, I have a spreadsheet uh, on my, on my laptop with everybody that I've ever met in commercial real estate. And I have, uh, you know, phone number, email title, what company they work for. Um, and I have a column with X's in it for, uh, meetings that I've had with them post-grad. Um, so like there's four names with one X, right. And what I try to do is like space that out a little bit. Um, so like, do another name drop. Like next time I'm in Dallas, I want to grab coffee with John Brownlee over at JLL and Tucker Wells at ACRE because I haven't, I haven't had a chance to catch up with those guys. Uh, so yeah, it, it is, it's, it's tougher to balance. Uh, I would say kind of being so far away from the Mecca that is DFW. Um, but just making a trip out there and trying to get three or four different people every time you go out there or, you know, do, uh, if you live there, obviously it's easier. Maybe try to have like, one meeting a week uh, with some of these people that you've met um, and be sure to like make sure you're hitting those different people uh, every time you go just because all of the connections will stay uh, maintained that way. That's kind of how I tackle it. Yeah, yeah. I want to give two examples real quick. Um, so the first time I met Ben was actually we toured the uh, American Airlines Center. Which was this is which is where the Dallas Mavericks and the uh, the Dallas hockey team plays the stars. And I set that tour up because I was walking the street and the COO, his name is Dave Brown of American airlines center. I said, Hey, uh, Texas tech is coming into town. Can we give those students a tour? And he said automatically yes. And gave us a sweet tour. Um, so that's, that's like number one, number two, again, last week I was in Miami and I reached out to two buddies of mine um, one drove in from Orlando and we got, uh, uh, food at Hillstone. And then I slept on another buddy's couch who went to, um, Yukon and Buffalo. And so people want to help people want to build relationships with you. I can't stress enough. If you're in, you know, like if you're going home for spring break or winter break or fall break, and you're in your hometown, go out and meet with people. Um, and so real quick, Ben, like, by meeting these people, what starts to happen? Do you start learning the lingo? Do you gain more confidence in yourself? Like kind of talk to me about how you evolved. Yeah, very much so. Um, I remember being like extremely confused for a while about cap rates, just as an example. It's like this like buzzword term that everybody throws out and what does it actually mean? Um, but yeah, that, that like the vocabulary, I think, is a big thing that I've taken away like Real estate, just like any industry, has a lot of specific terms, uh, and it, you kind of have to know them uh, to be able to converse with people and really kind of know what's going on. And so just asking questions, like when I meet with these people, like, hey, like, what what exactly does this mean? Or like, what exactly is the function of this X, Y, right? And uh, I, I think that's like super beneficial just to grow kind of my personal knowledge. Uh, but then also like, I grew up kind of a shy kid, right? Um, and the evolving into the networking, it, it took a little bit. Um, but every successful interaction that you have, 
just breeds more confidence. And so that's why I think it's, it's especially easier, like if you've already met these people a couple of times, right. To just, you know, you're going to go out and you can classify this in your brain as like, this is a business meeting. Mm -hmm. And then you walk, you know, you might not talk about business at all. You might just be catching up, but at the end of it, you walk away and you're like, I did really good there. Um, And so it's a confidence booster, just talking to people uh, and getting better at talking to people. Yeah. And also also what comes from that too, uh, just on the back end, like selfishly, um, you never know like where life's going to take you, right? Like you don't know what's going to happen in five years, what your next opportunity is going to be. Like for me, I plan on going to SMU here in a couple of years and getting my MBA. Pony up. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Um, But yeah, if you, if you can maintain, like, Obviously, if I go to SMU, I'm going to be living in Dallas for two years. I'm probably going to end up staying based there. Um, And having the connections of, hey, or the dreams of mine, like I want to go out and start my own firm. Uh, So as many people as you can be close to uh, whenever that are doing something similar to that, whenever you go out and make your jump or whenever me and my buddies finally are ready to go start the business that we've always talked about, the Texas Tech real estate business. you know, being able by maintaining those connections to reach out to other owner operators and be like, hey, like, you think you could give me some advice? Like, could you help me out? Like, we're about to do our first deal. What should we look for? Uh, that's that's another reason that I do all this because of just my future plans. Uh, and like I've said before, people are so willing to help. Um, and I think that's just something that I always keep in the back of my mind uh, whenever I'm having these meetings and stuff. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, I heard you say officer, were you a real estate club? Were you in the leadership team? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, our org had like a hundred students in it, uh, whenever I was in it and I was one of 10 officers. So, uh, you know, just extra responsibilities, planning and, uh, you know, uh, like for the real estate conference last year, I know you're going to be speaking this year. Uh, so we showed up at the Cotton Court Hotel, all the officers at like 530 in the morning in our suits to get everything set up and kind of make sure the day went smoothly. Uh, so just, yeah, extra responsibilities kind of came with it, but also extra access. So Ooh, like, that's good. yeah, so like I'll give an example, like being a, an officer in the real estate organization was the single best decision I made in college because, uh, you know, we just got to do stuff that other other kids in the org didn't get to do right like uh that conference we were there all day uh the officers in the uh in in rio were the only people uh you know that weren't business professionals already they got to be there all day so you know eight o'clock to five o'clock i met everybody that was there i listened to every panel uh and just got that extra access and then later that fall uh for the industry trip it was actually an officers only industry trip out to dallas where we saw the headquarters of Oh, sorry, Tucker. Did I lose you, man? Nope, I'm here. Oh, sorry. It, it uh, my screen went blank for a minute. Um. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sorry. Uh, but we went out and saw the headquarters of JLL Northmark, like all of these giant companies, and got to meet managing directors and heads of capital markets and stuff, and uh, kind of just breeding more connections that way. And that was something that like I just wouldn't have gotten to do if I hadn't chosen to become a lot more involved. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it was I think just getting involved on campus is that's the thing that I stress, like get as involved as you can uh, while it's easier. Yeah. To people. Sweet. Well, it's um, it's 1030 over here. Ben, thanks for coming on. I mean, what I heard is like, hey, you know, be proactive in building relationships, try and maintain them by building a spreadsheet and uh, being creative and reaching out, lead with business. Um, become extremely active, not only for extra responsibilities, but extra access to kind of who, uh, where you're at. And then additionally, become friends with your professors. Um, is there anything that I missed out, Ben, that you'd want to say? Um, not really. I'll just hammer home one more time. Like, if you're interested in commercial real estate, you're in college, right? There, I would say it's pretty likely that there's a student org somewhat geared towards that. And like, there's a reason that a professor created that and is running that, right? Like he just, some, he or she, somebody wants to help students, wants to help you find your way uh, into this big sector. Um, 
and I just really stress like utilizing that because I mean, like I said, I no internship experience. I didn't figure out about commercial real estate until it was almost too late. Like I did almost everything the wrong way up until a certain point. And then I got really involved and I became, you know, I'm going, I had lunch with uh, one of my real estate professors yesterday. Me and Carl uh, are actually going to go get drinks when he gets back from Dallas. Uh, like these, these guys are my friends. Uh, and that was super beneficial because like without their help, without their connections, their networking skills, I solid chance I'd still be unemployed. Um, I mean, Carl's connection with Jordan was like the direct link to me not being broke. Right. So I just, I really stress, like take advantage of the opportunity of that access and those people that want to help you while you're still in school. Cause it gets a lot harder once you're out. Yeah. Well, Ben, thank you so much for your time and insight today. I'm always here to help if you need it. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in Lubbock and in Dallas, hopefully. Yeah. I'll be at the conference. I can't wait, man. All right. See you, bro. Yeah, thanks. Bye.